Good evening, everyone, and welcome to St. Joseph. Our presider tonight is Father Joseph Tran, assisted by Deacon Denny Langdon, and we invite you to please stand and join in singing our opening song, Let Heaven Rejoice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Uh, we call this Sunday Good Shepherd Sunday, uh, and it's also the 61st World Day of uh, Prayer for Vocation to the Priesthood and Consecrated Life. So I just want to throw everything out. <laughs> and as you, you uh, bring all the intention in today, I uh, pray for the intention that we could have more priests and religious in our church because we are in desperate need of their presence, right? So as we gather, I also want to welcome those who uh, uh, visit our parish this weekend. And as we gather, we take a moment to prepare ourselves for the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to an everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord for he mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. I will give thanks to you for you have answered me and have been my savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone rejected by the builder has become Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His kindness endures forever. The stone rejected by the builder has become. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not been yet revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine and mine know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order, that, in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This commandment I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord, that the words of the Gospel of the way our sins. Before uh, sharing my reflection, I want to know if uh, Nathan and uh, Hank are in the pews. You all look alike, I can't identify. <laughs> okay. Um, last week, I, uh, I said that I would like to uh, uh, present the, the homily on the uh, Last Supper here uh, as a gift for uh, uh, the whole parish, of course, um, for those who uh, participated in the ACA Archbishop Catholic Appeal, that because of your generosity, we get a rebate back, and so we use that money to 
have the restoration of the beautiful altar here. And among uh, those who help, uh, beside the uh, financial contribution, uh, of course, uh, one person who uh, donated the beautiful furniture here and a few uh, people who um, work with different companies uh, so that we could have the wood and the tiles uh, all installed properly and beautifully for us. So I uh, told them that I want to dedicate this homily. Uh, the reason why I want to do it today <clears throat> is because uh, Hank and Nathan are going to leave our parish. Uh, they get a new call, a new vocation to work for the Archdiocese of Denver. <laughs> so, um, so they are not going to be here with us. Um, um, and uh, so I, maybe they will be here tomorrow morning uh, and so anyway um, pray for me that I could combine the Good Shepherd homily and the Last Supper homily together <laughs> smoothly <laughs> no interruption uh, first of all I like to uh, <clears throat> talk about the Last Supper first now, many people after we got the beautiful altar here, and uh, I noticed many people even sat there and looked at the uh, masterpiece uh, of the altar and wonder who is who in the picture. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and they requested me also, Father, could you talk about uh, the uh, figures in the Last Supper here? And uh, I said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do it one day. So uh, this is the day I want to talk about that. Um, I just want to point you, instead of looking at the altar here, looking on the screen there, that is the original picture. <laughs> All right. It's just like we have so many copies of the Divine Mercy image, but what you see in our sanctuary is a copy of the original you know, image of the Divine Mercy. Other images, very colorful, they are not really. Right? And the same thing with the Last Supper. Uh, that one is a copy of the original one, uh, not the altar here, right? So um, where did it come from? Who painted it? And so probably many of you know the famous Italian uh, artist uh, by the name Leonardo da Vinci. Um, he was commanded uh, to paint this uh, masterpiece of the Last Supper uh, in the refectory of a Dominican monastery in Milan, Italy. And it took him three years to finish this masterpiece from 1495 to 1498. How did he begin the work? So uh, I won't go into detail, but just briefly this way. He wanted to paint Jesus first in this picture. So he said, Jesus as the son of God, the good man, you know, the good shepherd, uh, there is only perfection in him. So I have to find a model who is best looking and look holy and pious. And so he decided to go to the church and go to the convent to look for a model <laughs> uh, to be like Jesus. So he, he found one, he found it, and then he painted Jesus. And then after Jesus, he began to fill in the other 11 um, apostles. And then who is the last one he painted? Judas Iscariot. So again, now knowing the history of how weak Judas Iscariot is portrayed in the Bible, so he said, I have to fight a sinful man, an ugly man. <laughs> uh, there's someone who is dirty and, you know, who, 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 who is the opposite of perfection, of goodness, of holiness. And so I said, well, now I have to go to the place where there's a lot of cramps, <laughs> dangerous corners of the street, or even go to prison to find, you know, the worst criminal. Uh, to be a model for Judas Iscariot. So he did. So he went out and he found a model for Judas Iscariot. And so when, so that is three years, you know, after painting Jesus. And then he took this man into that refectory. Uh, Our Lady of Grace is the name of the monastery. And when 
the, the model was brought into the refectory. He covered his ears, covered his eyes. He was shouting, screaming. And everyone was shocked, you know, and said, well, what, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? And then, and, then, and, and then it took him a while to answer the question. I am not okay because I was here three years ago. I was a model for Jesus. <laughs> and now I could see how I changed. I am so, I am shrinking. I am so small. I am older and I, I don't look like myself three years ago in that image of Jesus. And so now uh, let's go into the story. So probably when, and I, I think it is very common, uh, not only for Westerners, but even, even for the Asian, when we all look at the Last Supper, the first question, who is Judas? <laughs> <laughs> who is Judas? Everybody knows who Jesus is. He's at the center of attention right there, right? But who is Judas Iscariot in this, in this picture? Uh, right there. Okay. I hope you could see. You can, okay, everyone can see it, right? Okay, I point at Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> so this is right here. So you could see that he is the only one who has his whole arm rested as a sign of tiredness from life resting on the table nobody had that and look at all the figures in there look at him he is shorter in the height compared with the other and small in even in appearance it kind of shrinking so, and then he has a bag of money right there. And then you could notice that Jesus, two hands, this hand is kind of reaching out to him uh, to give him the bread that he just dipped in the, in the bowl. And that was a response to uh, John the Apostle who asked Jesus uh, not to forget this whole picture here is uh, portraying the Gospel of St. John, chapter 13, verses 21 to 30. It's the discourse on who is the one who betrayed Jesus. After Jesus said, one of you will betray me, <laughs> right during the Last Supper. Right? So, um, so uh, Jesus answered that question, who is the one? He said, the one that will receive the bread that I just dip in my bowl. And so you could see Jesus kind of reaching out his hand to him on the picture. And, and his left hand is kind of opened it up this way, but the right hand is reaching this way. Okay. All right. So, um, and then from left to right, this is Bartolomeo or Nathanael. You hear his story in chapter 1 of St. John. And then here is James the Less. And then here is Andrew. Here is Judas Iscariot. And here is Peter. Peter with a knife right there. <laughs> now you wonder why the knife? Well, it's because uh, he is the one who used the knife uh, to cut the ear of a soldier uh, during that moment, Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus in the garden, if you remember that story of the passion narrative, right? So, and then here is St. John, okay? Uh, St. John, the son of Zebedee, um, also the gospel writer of the gospel of St. John. Uh, so, you would notice the two heads are kind of leaning to each other, the story of the betrayal, the Last Supper, is even though it is recorded in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, and in John, but um, Leonardo da Vinci is interested in St. John only. So it is in St. John when after Jesus said, uh, one of you will betray me this night. And Peter is the one who was kind of giving some kind of sign to John the beloved disciple as a way, 
why don't you sit next to the master? Why don't you ask him who is that? And so you see the two guys, Peter and John, were talking with each other. Uh, Peter was uh, asking John to ask Jesus who is that one, right? And so Jesus already answered that the one who will receive the, the bread that I will dip in my bowl. And then moving on to this one, you see this guy here with the finger up? <laughs> That is Thomas the doubter. <laughs> That's a good way to identify, you know, Thomas the doubter. Remember, after the resurrection, Jesus appeared, and, and he wasn't there, and he didn't believe that Jesus really came back to life. And, and, and then he, he said, unless I put my finger into his nail marks and everything, and then I will believe. And so Jesus came back again. And so that finger is touching the side, the nail marks of Jesus. And then this one here is the fullness of expression. That is uh, James the Great, the brother of John. And both of them, James and John, uh, are the sons of Zebedee. If you remember the story, how the mother of James and John came to Jesus and asked, you know, can you do us a favor? One sit in your right and one sit in your left in your kingdom. So you see John on the right of Jesus, and James is on the left in the picture. Right. Hey, am I blocking your way? <laughs> okay. All right. And then remember that James and John are the ones in you go to the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 9, where Jesus said, you know, it's about time for me to enter into my passion, so let's have a reception. And, and so James and John were sent first to the Samaritan town to prepare a place of reception. And the Samaritan opposed them, no, get out of here. You are not Samaritan. You are Jewish people. We don't get along, you know. So get out of here. And so James and John, son of thunder, they asked Jesus to be called out, called out fire to consume all of them for the sin of opposing us. <laughs> so you see an, ang an angry man just kind of stretching his arms out. You know, nobody does that but James the Greater. And then here is Philip, you know, the one who is kind of having both of his, his hands into his chest. He was asking Jesus, is it me? Is it me? Is it me, Lord? You know, Philip is the one who, who brought Nathanael uh, to Jesus in the Gospel of St. John chapter 1. And he's also the one who um, the Greek came and asked to make an appointment with Jesus. So, um, um, Philip is, is, is that person. And then here you see Matthew, and then here you see St. Jude or Thaddeus, and then here is uh, Simon the Zealot. Okay, so um, those are the figures in the Last Supper. All right. Um, another thing if you look at is that you know, when, when the artist painted this picture, he put a lot of theology in this, and the main theology that he put in here is theology of the Trinity, <laughs> of the Trinity. So it's, it's all about, you know, it's kind of a call for us viewers when you look at Holy Communion. This is a moment we are united with the Holy Trinity, not just with Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, but also with the Father and the Holy Spirit. So he defined he, he kind of grouped the disciples. You see three in one group, three in one group, three in one group, and three in one group. And then you see, so that is the number three for the Trinity. And then Jesus himself, look at that. You look at the shape that he is the Trinity himself. In him contained the Trinity. And then um, in the original uh, image, this is not still... 100% copy of the original, but there are three coffers, one here, one here, and one here, and then one here, one here, and one here. So three coffers standing behind the disciple. And the purpose is to portray the Trinity. And then you see the windows here, there are three of them. And these three windows are kind of light. You know, this is to show that in Jesus, you see the Trinity in Jesus, you will see the way, the truth, and the lie to the Father. And Jesus said, no one can come to the Father except to me. So Jesus is kind of standing right in the middle of the three windows with a lot of light there is to, to show us that, that 
come to him if you want to, to, to get to heaven, or if you want to enter into the Trinitarian relationship, right? And then if you look at the towns above here, one, two, three, four, five, six, there are six, six rows of towels as a ceiling, standing for what? Creation. So it's kind of reminding that Jesus is the one who came to the whole passion, the, 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 the Last Supper, you know, where he became uh, the Paschal Lamb of God um, and to sacrifice himself uh, so that through his death and resurrection, he could restore uh, the creation of God that was destroyed by original sin back to the original image. All right, are you with me so far? <laughs> There's a lot to learn in there. Okay, so um, now I, um, I think that should be enough for, uh, for this image here. Um, now, how are we going to connect to the Good Shepherd Sunday today? <laughs> now you, if you look at the Gospel of St. John, um, today we are on chapter 10 of St. John, and the verses are from 11 to 18. You look carefully at eight verses of this gospel, you will see one thing that is repeated five times. And this repetition five times is a description of what and who the Good Shepherd is. The Good Shepherd is the one who lays down his life for the whole world. <laughs> and the Last Supper is the sacrifice. The sacrifice that Jesus poured out his life, uh, that is the Last Supper where he picked up the bread, he gave thanks, he picked up the cup of wine, he gave thanks and blessing, and then he gave to the disciple as he gave the bread, take this, all of you, and eat it, this is my body. And then he, came, he came, picked up the cup, gave it to the disciple, and he said, take this and drink it. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which will pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so the Last Supper is, I would say, another image of the Good Shepherd, according to St. John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18, where the Good Shepherd is the one who is willing to lay down his life, die for the sheep. And the Last Supper proved that. Right? So we, I think it's very easy to see that connection. We, we, and then if you look into the, God, in the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, uh, the book of Psalms, everybody knows Psalm 23. Everybody knows Psalm 100. Everybody knows Psalm 78, 79, all right? All these Psalms talk about the shepherd and the sheep. And if you want to f know the quality, the nature of the good shepherd, you go into those places. Or the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the book of the prophet uh, Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel, Micah, you know, series of prophets talk about, you know, the Messiah is going to be the good shepherd. And then when we turn to the New Testament, you go to the Gospel of St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. John, and first letter of St. John, uh, St. Peter. They all talk about Jesus as a good shepherd. And not to forget, we are the sheep of his flock. And so where there, wherever there is a shepherd, there is a sheep. And so wherever there is a mentioning of the good shepherd, there is mentioning of us in there as a sheep of his flock. And so I don't need today, I don't want to talk about who the shepherd is. We talk about who Jesus is the entire year, but today I just want to ask each one of us, as we kind of, you know, come to, especially here at St. Joseph, we are blessed with the Last Supper here, and we know the personality of almost all the apostles in there, the, their strength and their weakness, and I think we know their weakness more than their strength. I didn't talk anything about their strength, but I talk about the weakness, right? So Nathanael is the one who has a lot of pride. You know, he, when, when Philip came to him and said, oh, you, 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 want to, you, know, you want to come and check out the Messiah? Who is the Messiah? Nathanael asked. And, and Philip said, oh, 
Uh, he, he is from Nazareth. <laughs> and then Nathaniel said, come on, dummy. <laughs> I know scripture. There is no Messiah from Nazareth. Come on, and Nazareth, it doesn't even exist on the, on the map. What are you talking? The Messiah? No way. And so he's a lot of pride. He, he thought that he studies scripture and he knows exactly what is in there, but not really. So when he was brought to Jesus by Philip, and then he had a conversion. He called Jesus Rabbi Master because Jesus knew everything about him. Right? So pride is in, uh, in Nathanael. And then uh, you go to um, Judas. Well, everybody knows his weakness, right? Uh, love of money. You know, nothing but money. And he did not tune in to the discussion of the disciples there. If you look carefully, the, the, the artist painted him as the one who kind of leaning away from Jesus. When everyone trying to get to Jesus, he is backing out away from Jesus. And so this is definitely someone who is living in sin and it isolating himself from God and from the whole community. And he's the one who left, who left the party first. <laughs> okay, and then <clears throat> you go to Peter, the man who is always angry, you know, a very hot temper. And then you go to James, the greater. I, I talk about calling fire, uh, another angry man full of hatred. Uh, Thomas, the doubter, <clears throat> all right? Um, and Matthew, the tax collector, always charging more greed, right? So as, as we kind of, uh, today's gospel is inviting us, now we know who the good shepherd is, Jesus is. But let's talk about ourselves. When we, when we look at the Last Supper image, it's like a mirror to reflect us, who we are in that image. Am I the one, am, what kind of sheep I am? If I am really through the water of baptism, I become a sheep of his flock. But what kind of sheep I am? I, am I that sheep who, who, who is angry, who is filled with hatred, who is doubting, not believing, who is living in sin and not wanting to repent like Judas is carrying? Um, or the one, you know, anyone that you know up there. So it's more a ref reflection for all of us to reflect today, what kind of sheep I am. And then from the gospel, there are four things that Jesus mentioned in there, you know, like uh, criteria for the sheep to be two sheep of his flock. Uh, number one, they have to know him. <laughs> they have to know him. Do we know Jesus? If we call ourselves the sheep of the flock of Jesus Christ, do I know? The, the Greek word here is ginosko. Ginosko is not just knowing, but it is a personal relationship. Do I have a personal relationship with Jesus through my prayer? Man, I've been a Catholic for all my life long. I pray millions of rosary <laughs> and prayers. I should know who Jesus is. I don't need to open the book. I don't need to hear anyone, but I should know from the bottom of my heart, in the deepest secret of my mind and my soul, I know who Jesus is. Do I have that personal relationship with Jesus? Can I feel him, you know, uh, present in my life? Can I see him when I wake up in the morning? Can I see him when I go to bed? Can I see him when I'm happy? Can I see him when I am sad? When I'm up, I'm down, is he there for me? That is what we call personal relationship. The confidence to know someone is always with you when any other human creature cannot be with you. That is personal relationship. Right? And then the second criteria for the sheep to be true sheep of, of, of the flock of Jesus in the gospel today is that can you hear him? The word here is akuo in Greek. It's not just hearing in one ear and going out another ear, but it's about hearing with understanding and obeying, living out what you hear. How often we hear the word of God, do I listen to it and live it out in my life, or I just listen and then I give it back to the pastor, to the preacher when I live this. 
and I don't even remember what the homily was about or the gospel was about. <laughs> Speaking of hearing, uh, yesterday I have a chance to look at this clip where there was a group of students who were taken to the farm uh, to test the hearing of the sheep. And so, first student came out and tried to call the sheep. They didn't care. <laughs> Second student tried different voice, and the sheep just eating and busy on the pasture. The third student, the same thing, calling a different name, and the sheep like ignore totally. Finally, the true shepherd of the flock came out, and just one voice of the shepherd, the sheep ran to him, <laughs> and they follow. It's, it's just amazing, and it's, you know, it, it, this hearing, sheep are very sharp in their hearing, and they even have the very sharp vision. They know who the true shepherd is, and they will follow only the true shepherd, right? Right, do I have that hearing, you know? Do, do I, can I hear the voice of God in my life? That, that, that if you call yourself a sheep of the flock of Jesus. Okay, third criteria, unity. <laughs> You know, Jesus prayed you know, from the first moment of his ministry to the last moment of his ministry that you know, all my sheep from this flock and that flock will be united in one. Do I work for unity? Uh, the, the, the word in Greek here is heis. Heis for unity, for, for oneness, is uh, opposing to division. So it's, it's a time to ask ourselves, you know, whatever I'm doing here in my, in my faith, even though it, it looks, what I'm doing is really good, but does it bring unity? Or I divide myself from the community? And sheep, one of the character, char characteristics of the sheep is that they have the flocking instinct. They cannot survive when they are alone by themselves. They have to be united with the flock. If one is separated from the flock, it will be dead soon. The reason why is because when sheep fall back on, you know, fall on their back, they don't know how to get up. So they need a companion to help. They need a shepherd to raise the sheep back. And so isolation from the community, you know, any kind of division is not part of the uh, characteristic of the sheep of the flock of Jesus, right? Promote unity. And finally, the four criteria from the gospel today is one shepherd. That is, you only listen to one shepherd. You obey one shepherd, one Lord, one Jesus only. You don't have another God hidden in your life. So with the reflection that I just shared with you, I hope that this is the day that we could reflect on ourselves, you know, who I am especially when I look at the Last Supper masterpiece, and I could see, mm, am, do I look like what apostle in there? And I need to fix that to improve that so that I could be truly called the sheep of his flock. Let us stand and we profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven.
Let us bring to God our prayers. We pray, <clears throat> we pray for church leaders. May the Lord grant them wisdom and humility in shepherding his flock on the path of holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray for the salvation of all people. May the Holy Spirit lead all hearts to repentance of for sin and trust in God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who are ill. <clears throat> May Christ heal them in body and spirit and comfort them with his presence, especially those listed in our bulletin and as well in our prayer intention book. Let us pray to the Lord, <clears throat> hear our prayer. And we pray for all members of, our, of this faith community. May the Good Shepherd help us to love one another as he loves us. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have died with faith in the resurrection. May the Lord raise them up and welcome them into his heavenly banquet, especially Jack Baker, Sue Biskin, Donald Brazola, Joanna DeWolf, Patrick Doolin, Lou Joseph, Ann Kus Kissick, Joe Mott, Pat Phillips, Sherry Reading, Bernie Rock, Margarita Rodriguez, and Jack Siegel. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the intention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Josephine and Joe Duran. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, these are the prayers we humbly present in the powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ and through the intercession of Our Lady, Queen of Peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Let us pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Then we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, O of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us ready to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sam, our Bishop, or his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, so we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Could you please be seated for a moment? <clears throat> the Knights of Columbus are serving breakfast this Sunday, tomorrow, April 21st. After all, Mass is in the community center. Proceeds support parish events, seminarians, and outreach programs like campus ministries and crisis pregnancy centers. Thank you for supporting the Knights. If you have not yet made an appointment to be photographed for our new pictorial directory, please visit the table in the gathering area and sign up today. We are counting on everyone's participation. We are also looking for volunteers to assist with the process. Our second year sacramental preparation students will be confirmed on, in the Holy Spirit and receive the first Holy Communion with, the Arch, with Archbishop Aquila this coming Friday. Please pray for these students, their families, sponsors, and teachers, and that all will have their faith deepened as they encounter the graces associated with the sacraments. And Good evening, again. everyone. Uh, my name is Laszlo Gombes, and I came uh, here tonight to uh, uh, talk about that we're going to do a consecration to our Blessed Virgin Mary coming up soon. Um, did you know that the total consecration to Jesus through Mary truly is the surest, easiest, shortest, and the most perfect means to becoming a saint? Jesus gave us his mother to be our spiritual mother and to help us grow in holiness. It's her mission to form us into saints. We are doing a consecration to our Blessed Virgin Mary starting Tuesday, April 30th, from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Um, through Tuesday, May 28th in the library of the Religious Ed Building just, just down below. Uh, we will consecrate in the church uh, Friday evening, May 31 at 7 p.m. With, with Father Tran. This day is the visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We will be using the book, 33 Days to Morning Glory by Father Michael Gately which can be purchased online. Actually, we also, uh, please grab a bulletin, especially if you're interested in doing this with us this year. Uh, the bulletin will have a, a picture of the book inside of it, uh, 33 Days of Glory. Um, and it's very easy to order online, but uh, please grab a bulletin on your way out. Um, I will be in the back for anybody that wants to uh, talk to me further about this program. We just finished a consecration to St. Joseph. Some, some of you are here, here with me tonight that were with me in that group uh, consecrating to St. Joseph. What an honor that was. Now it's time to consecrate to our Blessed Virgin Mary. How important it is to, to be consecrated to those two that are up on the very top of the totem pole and to, be, and to just be close to them and be close to Jesus is just, I, I could say it's just, just such, uh, it would be such an honor. So all of you are welcome to come join us. I hope you do. Um, this is an opportunity to consecrate to, our, uh, uh, consecrate to our Blessed Virgin Mary. So I just want to say, I uh, conclude that um, our Blessed Virgin Mary, please pray for us. St. Joseph, pray, pray for, for us. us. God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Laszlo. So uh, Laszlo will be in the back to answer any question you have. Thank you. And uh, finally, I just want to read the letter the Archbishop is asking every priest to read at all the parishes this weekend. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, every year you enrich and promote the works of your local church by contributing to the Archbishop's Catholic appeal to those who already have donated. I offer my genuine and heartfelt thanks. This 2024 appeal is inspired by the Lord's invitation to abide in relationship with him Especially in his memorial sacrifice of the Eucharist, Jesus always transforms us and bears fruit in and through us by this incredible gift. As the Gospel of St. John reminds us, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these. The annual appeal is your chance to partner with the 
and extend the great works of more than 40 archdiocesan ministries as they serve our neighbors in need and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you have not yet donated, please make a meaningful and intentional appeal gift this weekend at archdem.org-give today. May our Lord bless you with his happiness and peace. Sincerely and gratefully yours in Christ. Most Reverend Samuel Aquila, Archbishop of Denver. Please rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. Be with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael, Michael the, the Archangel, defend us, us in battle. battle. Be, be our, our protection, protection against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God, God be with you.